This isn't the Pi 400. Hold on a second. This is the Raspberry Pi 400. It comes in a kit with a mouse, power supply, and HDMI cable for a hundred bucks. And all you need to do is plug it into a monitor and you're in business. And this is a Raspberry Pi keyboard. It costs 20 bucks and it has a built-in USB hub. At a glance, it's hard to tell what's different when you look at them both, at least from the top. The F10 key is now a power button where it used to be the scroll lock and the scroll lock indicator is now a power indicator. When you pick it up though, you might notice the Pi 400 is just over 100 grams heavier than the Pi keyboard, weighing in at 384 grams, which is just under a pound if you're into freedom units. Besides the weight, like a man with a mullet, the party is in the back. I'll flip it over, and here's the first big difference you can see. There are vent holes in the bottom of it. And now, looking at the back of both of them, it's obvious this isn't just another keyboard. The Pi 400 has all the same ports as the Pi 4 Model B with the exception of one of the USB 2.0 ports which is rewired internally for the keyboard. But I have some questions. How is this thing dissipating heat? Last year I showed the Pi 4 needed good cooling when used in a case. How's the Pi 400 dealing with this problem and how did they cram a Pi 4 Model B inside the keyboard? All the other projects I've seen end up with a really tall keyboard but this one's as short as the regular keyboard. Well, Let's crack it open and find out. Now looking at the bottom, there aren't any screws, but if you look really closely at the sides, there are some slats, uh, and it looks like there are snap fit couplings that hold together the top and bottom just like the regular Pi keyboard. So I'll grab a couple tools from the workshop and see if I can get inside. No red shirt, Jeff, that's not how we're going to open it. Sorry about that. Anyways, I grabbed my plexiglass cutting tool because apparently it's the only tool I have that's both thin enough to get into that tiny crack and rigid enough to be able to pop the snaps open. There's probably a better tool for this, but you use what you got, and it's definitely a lot better and safer than a sawzall. I'll work my way around the edge, unsnapping all these connectors. And I'll try not to slice open one of my fingers. Now I can separate the top keyboard from the bottom shell, and the first thing I see is a whole lot of heatsink. It looks like the keyboard just has a flip up connector right here, so I'll disconnect that. The keyboard is just a keyboard, so I'm going to set that aside for now. Now back to this heatsink. The first thing I see is a conductive pad over in the top left corner. I actually asked the Pi engineers about this. They said it grounds the keyboard to the rest of the Pi 400 chassis. So I'm going to pop that off and get to work on these number one little Phillips screws. All right. Looks like the heat sink. There's nothing else that is holding the heat sink down that I can see. So I'm, I'm thinking that it's being stuck onto the system with a chip or something else with some thermal adhesive, so I'm gonna rock it back and forth and see if I can unseat it. There we go. And there it is, the Pi 400's guts exposed. The heatsink is huge and it's only thermally bonded to the system on a chip through this adhesive here, so it'll definitely be able to dissipate the heat. I still wonder though about the USB and network controllers. Sometimes they get a little bit hot if you're pushing it really hard. It might be possible to put some other thermal bond between these chips and the heatsink, but it's probably not going to be necessary unless you're going to use the Pi 400 as a NAS. And looking at the board itself, it's definitely not a Pi 4B with the ports cut off. It's an entirely new board, and I already see a few circuit level differences from the regular Pi 4. It looks like the network connection uses a new IC. I looked it up and noticed it supports PoE++, but the Pi 400 doesn't support power over Ethernet otherwise. You'll still need to plug in power through USB-C. And looking really closely at the system on a chip, 
It looks like the part number is different than the chip in the regular Pi 4 Model B. At the end, it says C0T, and on the Model B I have, it says B0T. This indicates a newer stepping for the BCM2711 chip, which means this chip has some slight improvements and bug fixes compared to the version on the Pi 4 Model B. The biggest improvement, and I think the main reason for the massive heatsink, is that this chip is clocked at 1.8 GHz by default. The regular Pi 4 Model B is clocked at 1.5 GHz. So let's pop out the board and see if there's anything interesting underneath. There aren't any screws, just these two clips that hold it down. It's a great design from an assembly standpoint, though it's not something I'd try to pop out unless I really had to. Okay. All right. Looking at the bottom, there's not much here besides traces that are connected to the components on the top through vias. Or maybe that should be via vias? I don't know how to say that. Anyways, nothing much to write home about on the bottom, though I do see that if I follow the trace for the keyboard over here, it goes all the way back to the USB controller chip on the other side, which is right here. Anyways, I like that it's a pretty simple and robust design. I'm gonna put it back together and tell you a little bit more about the Pi 400. I was wondering why it's called the Pi 400. The first thing that came to my mind was the ancient IBM AS400 system, but that thing is huge and definitely doesn't have an integrated keyboard. Then I wondered, maybe it's a reference to the fact that it's a Pi 4 in a uh, 78 key keyboard? Well, it doesn't have 100 keys, much less 400, so that's not it. The more likely explanation relayed to me from someone at the Pi HQ is that it's an homage to the old Amiga 500, which was a similar computer and keyboard in one form factor, albeit with a much deeper back area, kind of like an old Apple II, but not quite as deep. But this Pi is a modern Linux computer, and if I were to put it in Steve Jobs' words, it's impossibly thin. If you wanted to trick someone, go unplug their desktop, replace their keyboard with this one, and plug the monitor into it. They'll never figure out what happened. Anyways, that's it for this video. Check out my separate review video to see how it works and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling. When you pick it up though, <clears throat> now let's try that again. USB 2.0 ports, which is rewild. Oh man. How do you have bloopers when you're doing this? It's always harder when you're actually doing it. Old Omega, Omega, it's an Omega.